Hello, this is Marquette Pierce, and I wanted to talk with you today about how flipped instruction is purposeful pedagogy. This video is going to explain how flipped instruction is actually a strong support of the Common Core. So first I'd like to take a minute and discuss the basic tenets of flipped instruction and how those differ from traditional instruction. So on the left hand side you can see um, a Madeline Hunter lesson design, which many teachers are familiar with. Um, in a Madeline Hunt Hunter lesson design, um, we start with an anticipatory set, which is described as you can see. Um, we set the purpose or the objective for learning. Um, teachers do this often and communicate what students will need to be able to do. Um, then we often seek input. Um, this is sometimes a formative assessment to try to figure out what students already know and what they will benefit from learning. Um, and then we move into the real work of teaching and learning, which is, of course, modeling, guided practice, checking for understanding more formative assessments, and independent practice. Now notice that for number seven, it says the teacher releases students to practice on their own based on three through six. So number seven is really a response to students' work in this area. Um, and only when they are able to work independently are they released to do so. So that's the traditional lesson design. On the right-hand side, you'll see a table from Bergman and Sam's book um, in which we compare the traditional classroom versus a flipped classroom. So we can see the same components in a Madeline Hunter lesson are maintained in a flipped classroom lesson. Um, however, we push the three through six input modeling guided practice and checking for understanding outside of class via a video very often, um, which leaves more time in class, as you can see here, for guided and independent practice and or lab activity. As compared to in the traditional model, students might be lucky to get 20 to 35 minutes of guided and independent practice. In a flipped model, the majority of the class time is spent working independently with an expert to guide them on the content. Flipped instruction is a vast change from the traditional paradigm used in education, and mainly this change has to do with the way time is viewed. Um, so I've listed on this page several ideas to keep in mind about flipped instruction. We'll start right at the top. Um, first of all, time is completely restructured in flipped instruction. This comes from the Bergman and Sam's book. Um, for example, teachers reconsider the best uses of collaborative time with an expert, um, the teacher being the expert. So rather than simply using the time together to deliver direct instruction, uh, perhaps a student would be better served by actually interacting with that teacher and gaining the benefit of their years of experience. Flipped instruction allows that to happen. Mastery of material, for example, is valued over advancing through content on time. Um, Khan, in his book One World Schoolhouse, makes a point and that in the traditional model of education, we value time over mastery. And in a flipped model, we make the time for mastery, recognizing that individuals learn at different paces, and flipped instruction values that differentiation. Um, related to that, students receive direct instruction on viewing these videos if the teacher is going to employ videos in their flipped classroom. Um, on viewing those videos effectively. Um, simply producing a video and expecting a student to know how to engage with that material is no more responsible than passing out a worksheet or assigning reading outside of class without setting the purpose for that reading. So teachers in a flipped classroom still need to give direct instruction, in this case, often on how to actually access the content. When students come to class, that class is centered around the student, not the teacher, which is a huge change in flipped instruction. So student-centered learning is a main tenet of flipped instruction. And to wrap this all up, the role of the teacher, um, and again, this comes from the Bergman and Sam's book, the role of the teacher in the classroom is to help students not to deliver information. So in a flipped classroom, we recognize that while transmission of information is still valuable and direct instruction still has its place, that the best use of a learner's time together with other learners in that collaborative work, workplace and with an expert to guide their learning is probably not to receive that direct instruction. Instead, the best use of that collaborative time with an expert is to ask the ac expert questions and to collaborate with other learners. For the next step, I'd like to try to connect the flipped instructional model 
with the Common Core state standards. Um, and to address that, I'd like to start by a brief discussion of the purpose of K-12 public education. Uh, the way Common Core has answered the question at the top of the page is to prepare college and career ready students. So upon graduation from high school, students should be ready to enter either the workplace or a college in which they will gain further skills to prepare them for the workplace. That is the stated goal of the Common Core State Standards. The Common Core State Standards are quite exhaustive in nature. In fact, there is a 80-some page booklet that I've gathered this information from um, focusing on reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And there's another 80-page booklet that uh, deals with the common course shifts in mathematics. So what I've prepared is meant to be just a very basic, basic introduction to the common core and how flipped instruction supports common core. So starting with college and career readiness in literacy, I've included at the bottom right-hand side something many teachers are familiar with, Bloom's Taxonomy, um, which basically starts with, at the bottom, the most basic lower order thinking skills, L-O-T-S, remember, understand, and apply. So the idea here is that students must first master um, being able to remember content, being able to understand it, and being able to apply it before they can move on to the higher order thinking. Um, so if we look at this document very briefly, um, I have color-coded the description of things that college and career ready students will do based on where I think it meets Bloom's taxonomy. So we can see that with Common Core, as with flipped instruction, there is still a valuing of Bloom's taxonomy and of this hierarchy of knowledge. So for instance, students still need to remember their content. They have to build strong content, which comes at the very bottom of Bloom's taxonomy. After that, um, they need to be able to understand, for instance, other perspectives and cultures, how that information is actually um, part of a larger context. After that, they can move on to um, preparing, for instance, um, differing documents based on their audience, their task, their purpose, their discipline. So they're really applying, for instance, how to write like an investigative reporter or to read like a detective um, in this area before they can moving on, move on to analysis and evaluation, choosing which tools um, best meet that task. Um, likewise, they are not simply comprehending, they're critiquing. Um, they're critiquing what the author is saying, they're critiquing what their classmates are saying. Um, students in the Common Core are not simply receivers of knowledge, but they are really being forced and urged to produce and evaluate others' knowledge. And of course, getting to the very, very top of Bloom's taxonomy, we can see that students, and this is actually the first thing listed, demonstrate independence, and they value evidence. I've listed that as a subset of valuing, um, I'm sorry, of demonstrating independence. So we can see that the common core state standards really do support Bloom's taxonomy, the revised idea of Bloom's taxonomy, and flipped instruction furthermore supports the common core state standards. To address how flipped instruction supports the common core, once again I have color-coded my information and I have attached it to Bloom's taxonomy. So here are some statements about flipped instruction and by looking carefully starting uh, with the bottom of the ladder remembering we can see that flipped instruction supports mastery of content knowledge before one advances on um, so this really does support the kind of the remembering aspect of Bloom's taxonomy of course after one remembers they might be able to understand um, flipped instruction encourages student collaboration with wildly different cultures um, for instance via Skype conversations or Google Hangouts or using Google Earth to take field trips of flipped instruction uh, connects students with those from around the world. Furthermore, flipped instruction encourages mindfulness when reading and writing for various tasks, audiences, and disciplines. So again, this encourages students to apply what they have learned and to write and produce text competently in their content area. Um, that leads us up to analyzing. Um, flipped instruction requires students to use technology and digital media strategically and capably. As I mentioned in the previous slide, not only do students receive information in a flipped model, but they also produce information and content. And so in order to choose the technology and the digital media appropriate to their task, their audience, and their purpose becomes very critical and embedded in a purposeful flipped classroom. 
flipped instruction requires students to both comprehend and critique. So again, at the evaluative level, we can see that flipped instruction benefits students. And of course, at the very top, flipped instruction values independent collection and use of evidence so that students may create strong content in their discipline. Using one of those 80-page documents from the Common Core, this time I have aligned the Common Core state standards related to math, or rather what a college and career ready mathematician does, um, also against Bloom's taxonomy. Now what I find most interesting in this scenario is that remember and understand, and again this is coming from the 6th through 12th grade um, standards, remember and understand barely even appear on um, the list of things students are expected to do. Um, that's really the price of admission. We expect students to remember what they've learned in the previous grades and to understand them so that, for instance, they can make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Um, but notice, remember, is not even covered on the new standards. There's a lot of application, modeling, for instance, making use of structure, looking for regularity and repeated reasoning. Um, there's a lot of analysis, using tools, just like in literacy, um, and reasoning abstractly and quantitatively. And again, in their creation of mathematic texts, we expect students to attend to precision and include the labels for units and to be precise with their measurements. So just as in literacy, the Common Core really forces students into, again, the higher order thinking skills, anal analysis and above, um, and really expects students to walk in the door remembering, understanding, and to a certain extent being able to apply the information that they've learned. When Bergman and Sams first introduced the concept of flipped instruction, um, many, many teachers thought that the only way to flip instruction was this top one, to create videos that students would watch outside of class, to clear the air, to clear the time and the space, to complete what used to be homework inside class. And that certainly is a prevalent model of flipped instruction, but it's not the only one. On this slide, I've listed many other models of flipped instruction that can benefit students. Um, at their heart, all of them communicate their learning objectives, encourage flexibility of process to achieve these objectives. So there's a strong emphasis placed on understanding and whatever students need to do to, to gain that understanding is valued in a flipped classroom. Um, another model for flipping might be, for instance, to flip only the content that lends itself to direct instruction. So, for instance, perhaps a teacher, rather than flipping all of their instruction or all of a unit, would carefully consider what aspects of that unit really do benefit or in which aspects do students benefit from direct instruction, from transmission of knowledge. Oftentimes that's tier two and tier three vocabulary, domain-specific words and those that transfer across the contents. So perhaps a teacher can create videos or um, link to content, articles and the like, that help students to gain an understanding of that vocabulary. Um, if there's anything that requires steps to be taken, as an English teacher myself, steps in a creative process or in a writing process are often easily uh, communicated to students via flipped instruction. I can make a video with a worksheet that reminds them that writing is a process and that they need to revise and edit before they publish their work and refer back to that often. Other models of flipped instruction include student created content, sometimes as an assessment only, sometimes as the core of the instruction. Um, tied with that is often project based learning, so students attach their learning to a project and their goal is to work like workers in the marketplace to um, take a product or a project from beginning to end. Sometimes in a science class they use inquiry based learning or inquiry approaches to learning so they will simply ask many many questions and um, engage with a scientific method to try to solve that and an, a very common method of uh, flipped instruction is the flipped mastery model which combines both flipped model again valuing the learner's time with an expert and peers with whom they can collaborate in a mastery model that which values above all else mastery of material so you can see on this slide that flipped instruction takes many many forms other than simply videos being shown outside of class and homework taking place in class now that I've made the case that flipped instruction really does allow more 
time and effort to be spent on the higher order thinking skills, analysis, evaluate, and create. I think it's pertinent to take a minute and look at how much time is spent on those aspects in a traditional classroom versus a flipped classroom. So this chart we looked at briefly before, this comes from the Bergman and Sam's book. And again, I've color coded this. Um, so if we start in the traditional classroom side, the warm up activity in the Madeline Hunter model is simply an anticipatory set. It warms up, it reminds students of the content, it sometimes um, sets the purpose. Um, so that one really is not, I would say, an example of remember. Um, we don't really get into that until the next, um, starting at minute six, let's say, going over previous night's homework as an example of remembering. Um, from there, we move into a lecture on new content, which in a 90-minute class, notice takes up almost half of the class. That's where students are asked to simply understand. Um, and then the guided and independent practice or lab activity is where they apply, and sometimes it happens in class. We'll often spend um, time getting the homework started, but a good portion of this, I would say, happens outside of class. So if we look on the traditional classroom model, we can see 20 minutes or so is spent on remembering, 30 to 30, 45 minutes is spent on understanding, and the remaining 20 to 35 minutes is spent on application. So in a traditional classroom, in the model that Bergman and Sams have mentioned to us that is based on Madeline Hunter's um, essential elements of effective instruction, we can see there really is no time allowed for analysis, evaluation, or creation. Whereas if we look at a flipped classroom, the warm-up activity um, is really where we ask students to remember, for instance, the video they have seen last night for homework or to um, share an article that they found while conducting research. That goes by very, very quickly because the expectation is that students are taking ownership of their learning. So five minutes to remember in a flipped model versus 20 in a traditional. Um, the question and answer time on the video that's really where students demonstrate their understanding and you can clarify any points that they did not understand in a flipped model and that might take 10 minutes. So again, that is significantly shorter than the 30 to 45 minutes that was being used for understanding in a traditional model. Next comes application, which I would say also comes in while students are asking questions about the video. They're, they're practicing using the terminology that you have used or clarifying that they understand and can now apply the concepts you've instructed them. This might also fall into this next box, the guided and independent practice and or lab activity. So I've listed that the application time in a, tri in a flipped classroom might take 10 to 20 minutes. So if we stop right here, we can see that 20, 30, 35 minutes, for instance, in a flipped classroom is spent on these lower order thinking skills, which leaves 55 minutes to move on to these higher order thinking skills, analysis, evaluation, and creation, which can all be embedded into the independent practice, the lab activity, or the creative work. So in conclusion, the flipped classroom, by clearing the time and the space of the collaborative time in a classroom to be used for analysis, evaluation, and creation, we really are supporting students in the heavy lifting that is the higher order thinking skills. We are expecting students to come in the door with the lower order thinking skills, remember, understand, and apply, already mastered or at least attempted. I encourage you to continue investigating resources related to Common Core State Standards and Flipped Instruction, and I've listed several to get you started. The first two are the documents I mentioned, the PDF files of the literacy changes and the math changes coming from the Common Core. The next is an example, uh, the Wikipedia entry for Bloom's Taxonomy. The fourth is a link to Madeline Hunter's work, a PowerPoint explaining the IIEI um, model. And then, of course, I've listed Khan Academy and Saul Khan um, as a resource, as I have John Bergman and Aaron Sams and their community. As someone interested in collaborating with other flipped instructors, I encourage you to contact me as well. So you may contact me on Twitter. I am Ms. Pierce Tweets on Twitter. I also have a blog where I blog about educational reform. That is fearlessflip.wordpress.com. And also my professional portfolio is online at careermarquette.blogspot.com. Thanks very much, and I hope this video helped you to be more confident in flipping your instruction and has helped you to understand how flipped instruction does support the Common Core State Standards.